Is this the secret crime plan of the JCF? Sorry, sorry, what say that again? Driver's license and documents. Oh, you say you're conducting a what? Vehicle safety check. So I was stopped to conduct vehicle safety check? Yes. That's it? Yes, that's it. So, this, this so you're show. asking that I do what office? Sorry, I, I, let's get me that another video, perfect. As I'm saying, yes. I'm taking four guns. Right. Drugs. Yes. You may be transported. And I'm asking, under what grounds do you suspect that I have committed a crime or is attempting to commit a crime? You're, you're not committing a crime tonight. Okay. Hi, viewers and subscribers. Welcome. So, today we're going to talk about in this audit of the law. We're going to talk about whether or not this is a secret crime plan of the JCF. Have you ever heard about the concept of deception by lawful means? Well, you might have heard of this. Detection by deception. Well, that is actually a thing. Detect a crime by deceiving those around you it's actually a policy a procedure i should say that has been supported by the privy council in a ruling in jamaica from a, from as far back as 1968 in heman versus the queen all the way back in 1968 detection by deception Ooh, sounds away don't well let's get into it so detection by deception Essentially, just like how it sounds, it is literally tricking you to get to detect a crime. That's the key thing. Trick to get a crime. So, you can play any sort of a game they like by tricking you and you reveal a crime. And like I'm saying, yes. I'm taking four guns. Right. Drugs. Yes. You, got some you may be transported. Hi, how you do? Can see your papers for document inspection? Hmm. Would that be tricking you into seeing that your papers are not expired? Sorry, are expired when they when they actually say, give me the papers, let me see what's going on there. And then you're like, hmm, you have your, your, your fitness expire, man. Did they have reasonable probable cause for the stop? No. But by tricking, by detect, deceive, then by that own standard the JCF could very well be getting away with their practice now now the law has two sides it has the civil and it has the criminal element to it now under the civil law under the Constitution of Jamaica the police cannot stop and search you the police cannot search you in general let's say your house without a search warrant or at the very least a probable cause of some offense nevertheless there is this loophole i want to call it that exists in the same emans versus the queen 1968 which is a privy council ruling that is binding precedence that as far as the rule of evidence goes the police in their pursuit when they search though a search may be unlawful it matters not that evidence can be used against you in the court of law to convict you and as far as 2015 there has been convictions that ruling has been upheld and has been maintained in this beautiful land of Jamaica land we love today yesterday and even as far as I'm concerned tomorrow when you wake up that is going to be the law of the land so in this beautiful land of ours Jamaica the law has two sides if a police officer is to stop and search you and did not have a reasonable or probable cause for the stop and search and say they find a weapon under the civil law that evidence any evidence they find is not admissible and that is because the broad test that the Privy Council has maintained and continue to be so based on rulings of the Court of Appeal in Jamaica is that as long as the evidence is relevant is relevant that is all you no know, matter if it was illegally obtained search warrant or no search warrant as long as the evidence is relevant that is the test and the only test 
that the court has been maintaining to this day. So then, under civil law, if, you, if a police stop and search you and they did not have reasonable or probable cause, then you can sue for a barrage of damages, breach of constitutional rights, etc., etc. But under the criminal law, if the police find guns, etc., drugs, then, viewers and subscribers, that evidence is admissible. The question, though, is whether or not it is credible. So remember, the evidence is admissible as long as it is considered by the judge to be relevant. Yep, it's all up to the judge's discretion. That is the law as it relates to evidence in Jamaica. It's illegal, the court don't care. It legally obtained, the court don't care. Really and truly, what the court is saying is that there is a remedy. If the evidence is illegally obtained, it breaches your that is, it breaches your constitutional rights to privacy, protection from search, all of those rights, then it doesn't matter. Because there is a remedy. There is a remedy where you can sue for breach of constitutional rights and you get compensation. If it's on the other side of the coin where the officer had a warrant, for example, or had probable cause, but during that search, the officer breached some, some procedure that is established, what the court has said is that the officer, there is actually sanction. The police force has procedures that they can say, well, officer, suspension because they never do that or something, you know? Some remedy. And therefore, the only thing that the court is concerned with when it comes to evidence is relevance. Nothing else. They don't want to hear anything else. Illegal obtain that no matter. Go sue for breach of constitutional rights. Yeah? So remember, evidence is not it's not admissible in a civil suit against you. That is if the officer lacked requisite reasonable probable cause when they found the evidence, you can sue for malicious prosecution, trespass, all those civil mat claims, breach of constitutional rights, all of those claims you can make. But on the flip side, on the criminal side of things, if this evidence is considered to be relevant, it no matter, it is up to the judge to determine one thing. Is it relevant? And as long as it is considered to be relevant, then the evidence is going to be admissible. And the judge, you and your attorney has one thing to do, and that is to decide whether the evidence is credible or not. And that's the only way to get it out. Yeah. So that leaves us to the point. Is the JCF partaking in a wholesale breach of our constitutional rights? Hmm. I want you to answer that. Answer that for me in the comment section. Is the JPS, JCF, JPS, uh, participating in a wholesale breach of constitutional right by randomly stopping citizens, fishing expedition, knowing very well that, and that's the high command, that if they find any evidence, it can be used against you in the court of law. And so, forget about constitutional rights, you know, it's all about crime and protecting crime. No, they can go get compensation. We'll, we'll search anybody we like, even though they can go get compensation for all barrage of, you know, like we mentioned, on, on all barrage of grounds, as we mentioned, you know, forget about that. It's, we're going to search anybody we like, because guess what? Is it also the, th the thinking of the JCF that the population is so ignorant to the laws that the probability that they will actually take some form of a legal recourse is so low since the people don't know the law like that even though the law say ignorance is not an excuse yes is this a part of the jcf's crime plan to wholesale breach our constitutional rights knowing that that rule of evidence that says even if evidence is illegally obtained it can it is admissible as long as it is relevant is this a part of the crime plan of the JCF your guess is as good as mine I await your 
comments a little so we can have a discussion on this so I know that some of the questions that you may have is that whether or not the JACF a police officer could just come in your house and kick off a door and don't have a warrant the answer is <coughs> yes as far as I can see based on the interpretation of the act they can kick off a door if they like find the evidence take the evidence and the evidence is admissible against you but what about the Constitution again the Constitution provides a remedy your break your right is breach you can sue for breach of constitutional rights can the officer just see on the road and start search you remember most of the times it's tactics that is used remember we said that you can actually give away your constitutional rights you can waive your rights you can waive your rights by consenting to a search and not putting up any fight so that's accuracy your right yeah you give it away so the JCF the police can they kick your door down and come in here and take the evidence of course can they wiretap you without any warrant or probable cause of course they can is the evidence admissible yes is it a breach of your constitutional rights yes is the evidence admissible yes nevertheless as we said the law of evidence is as long as the evidence is relevant you know, no matter how it was obtained if it was stolen otherwise thief <laughs> yep if it was taken from your backyard if it did peep if it did wire tap and take it no matter how it was obtained as long as it is relevant mm, spooky stuff eh that brings us to the story of a man in Kingston this is an appeal court ruling he was on the side selling and while selling officers came up to him the officers saw him with an igloo and searched his igloo having searched his igloo the officers found marijuana the officer did not as the man held having a reasonable or probable cause to search his igloo he was arrested and charged and convicted in the parish court for illegal possession of controlled substances as marijuana dealing so on and so forth it was eight ounces the court of appeal upheld this conviction and in nice little paragraph said it matters not if the officer had reasonable or probable cause it's up to the judge and his or her discretion to determine if the evidence is admissible or not and that is on the grounds of relevance one time ago the rule was a little bit you know different there were some exceptions to it which is if it was the case that the evidence was obtained by some aggressive means oppressive means reprehensible circumstances then the evidence would not have been admissible but as far as i can see based on the, rel the current rulings as long as in that criminal matter or in any matter whatsoever the evidence is relevant that's all it takes for it to be admissible so remember in a civil matter the evidence would generally not be admissible the gun the drugs it's not admissible because it's not relevant to a case for breach of your constitutional rights or trespass or malicious prosecution or all of those civil matters but in a criminal matter the find with an illegal stop and search by the police is as far as i'm concerned though illegal it is the evidence that is found as long as relevant to proving the fact of the charge is going to be admissible and it's up to you and your lawyer to decipher whether or not it is credible or not that's your argument your argument has to be on the credible grounds it's a judge 
who has the discretion to admit. I, re I remember in, the when, in, in 2013 when Bats J came forward with a ruling that the officers needed reasonable probable cause to stop and search and that there is nowhere under the Road Traffic Act Section 58 and in the current Act Section 91 which is similar to Section 58 that allows an officer to stop and search a vehicle void of reasonable probable cause the first thing that the police high command came out and said was that hey they wanted to examine the ruling to see if it interferes with the crime plan and that seems to me to present information that it appears that a part of the crime plan has to do with something with stops and search so viewers and subscribers what is this audit showing this audit is presenting to us that it appears that there is a lot of illegal stop and search going on in the country what is the purpose of this is it a part of the crime plan knowing that as we said even if the constitutional rights to protection from search and property etc is breached if the officer found something illegal then it is admissible into court as evidence as long as it is relevant and in most cases it is relevant i mean if they find a chocolate bar that might not be relevant but you find guns and drugs it is relevant to prove illegal possession of firearm it's very, it is going to be relevant to prove um uh, possession of drugs etc control substances etc so it's a very tactical move as far as i can see i mean i would do it if i if it's allowed so the question is is it something that the jcf is doing because if it is then this is a big fail for the jcf it is not okay to breach wholesale breach people's constitutional rights what's the purpose of constitutional rights if you can just breach them as you like what's the purpose of protection of privacy of my home if it is just going to be that you can kick down my door and come in there and find drugs and guns and you know i am not saying i support criminal activities but i'm saying what's the purpose of constitutional rights if you're just going to be able to kick down my door find what you're finding and you know do whatever you like it 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 it, it makes constitutional rights not of any significance you know except to get some payout if you go for it if unlawful stop and search is indeed a part of the jc Sir, what is the purpose of this stop again? The purpose of this stop? Yes. So you're stopping me because you want to check the document? What else? We just have a random check. It's a random check? Yes. Officer, my name is Jermaine Dunn. You know it's not legal to stop somebody for a random check? You know it's not legal? To stop uh, someone for a random check? Yes, I, have, I currently have five cases. And a major part of it. Then, this auditor gives the JCF nothing but an F. An F for the wholesale breach of people's constitutional rights. Because if that's what the JCF is doing, then it means that the JCF considers every single citizen traveling along these roads as criminals. It appears that we're all guilty until proven innocent. And so they would just stop you to search for a crime because everybody is a criminal, technically. So JCF, if that's what you're doing, there are better ways to do police work. Use the tools that are available to you. Do real investigative police work. 
let us stop this practice of unlawful stop and search of people's vehicles. We are not all criminals in Jamaica. I agree that there are criminals amongst us. There are people who respect nothing that the law stands for, except the part that allows them to be alive. But JCF, stop if that's what you're doing, breaching our constitutional rights. Stop it, because we are not all criminals in Jamaica, land we love.